So here's for piriformis. The main key thing with piriformis, and I have a video drawing the sacrum and sciatic nerve. This line over here is really, you wanna stay away from hitting the, the center point of the glutes because you don't wanna uh, nick the sciatic nerve, but I'll preface again, it's not the worst thing if you do, you just wanna not stay within that vicinity. And um, the patient would have, um, if anything, you're dealing with a patient probably be mad that you um, injured them or, or hurt them. So, <laughs> so um, you don't want that to happen. Um, so this X, you're going to be working more lateral than the sciatic nerve um, location to get that muscle belly of the piriformis. You're going to be standing on the same side as where you're needling, and you're going to use your fingers to use a bracket uh, technique with your index and middle finger. Um, so you're really having to press down towards the posterior aspect of the ilium to get through that soft tissue and make some compression, then you're gonna penetrate the needle into the, um, the tissue. Um, you're gonna needle in a posterior to anterior direction into the myotendinous junction of the piriformis. Um, direct the needle laterally from here to contact the greater trochanter or direct immediately from the initial pass of the needle to treat more of the muscle belly. So basically this means you can, we talked about that, coning effect. So once you get the needle inserted into the skin, you can move the needle laterally to point more towards the greater trochanter and you would be affecting more of the tendon muscle area. And then you could retract the needle and point back to dead center of where the needle placement was to affect more of the muscle belly. You can do both. You could do one way um, or you could do another way. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It depends on what your clinical judgment is and what you're deciding to do. I might <coughs> err more on going with just um, doing the muscle belly at first, but, um, or I could cover more ground by doing both. Um, you do not want to like pass, um, but you don't, you want to make sure you're going lifting up the needle back superficially and then directing it towards the greater trochanter and then pulling the needle back up and directing it down straight down to the to the muscle belly you don't want to be moving the needle globally while it's deep trying to move it throughout multiple regions okay so here is a video of me um i am going to be um marking the sacrum so we're going to find the iliac crest to orient yourself, find the iliac crest, then find the PSIS. And you can mark the PSIS if you want on your partner. And that will be meeting those two points will be the top point of your triangle of the sacrum. And now you're gonna just line two marks towards the coccyx and you're, I'm finding S1, S2, S3 spinous process, S4. And we know that the piriformis comes off of S the anterior aspect of the sacrum from S2 through S4 segments. And then you're gonna find the greater trochanter and draw a line, two lines to the greater trochanter and then dead center. And there's usually a nice nerve bundle or nod. That would be where the sciatic nerve is. And so that X, you would not wanna be putting in a needle directly into or around it um, by like a finger finger width. Okay. Um, so here is needling the direct, the piriformis. That's a great demonstration, uh, Dr. Kelly. Uh, guys, just remember piriformis is a deep muscle, so you can use 75 to 90 mm needle. I mean, you can uh, you can mention your views, uh, Dr. Kelly. I mean, I like to use 75 mm needle or sometimes 90 mm needle because it's a deep muscle. Uh, yes. Yeah. So um, I am, yes, I'm using a deeper needle there. And just be aware that different brands have different um, like width of needles. So um, like some some people can feel that they're a little bit thicker, the Sometimes the needles can be thicker than what you're um, feeling. So like I have a needle it's right here. It feels thicker than some of the skinnier needles. But this is a, um, this is a 135 millimeter. 
Um, so I use pretty long needles um, within this region. So even greater 90, 100, 135 millimeters. Um, yep. Because as, hmm? no, please go ahead, yeah. Um, because within this day and age, um, the people are different sizes and I'm really trying to get deep in there. So I, I err on more of a deeper needle for sure, a longer needle for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because if you don't use the longer needle for piriformis guys, because you, you need to know the orientation of piriformis muscle. I know 90% uh, of your sciatic cases are piriformis syndrome, which I don't <laughs> abide by, but it's okay. Uh, you need to check the sacrum uh, uh, dysfunction as well. Uh, but if you are working on piriformis, whether it is uh, manual techniques or dry needling, try to approach it uh, deep because it's a deep muscle coming from the ventral aspect of your sacrum, which is the anterior aspect. Yeah. And at the end of the day, what, what you're talking about, Dr. Kimor, um, is it really truly the piriformis or is it the glute medius, you know, or minimus? And what's nice where I'm exiting right here, if you do if you do deep, then you're probably hitting two birds with one stone. You're not only dry, dry needling the piriformis, you're dry needling the glute medius, which will show in, a, in the next skill. So that's the way I look at it. I'm like, I'm, I'm, dry needling everything within that region that could be a point of restriction and um, hypertonicity or inefficiency, um, helping assist with um, Trendelenburg or abnormal gait pattern because the muscle isn't activating properly. Great, great. Um, so here is... Uh, one more quick uh, uh, addition, uh, Dr. Kelly. So we can do this technique in a prone position like you have seen, or sometimes people like to do it in a sideline position as well, keeping the uh, treatment side on the top. So, I mean, you can throw your views in there. Okay. Um, yeah, I just never personally have done it in sideline, but okay. um, you you can. I, I think my training just taught me to do it in prone. Um, okay. Because I can, um, I'm not just thinking isolatory with um, the needling. Usually I am correcting their sacral dysfunction, like what you said. <laughs> I'm doing um, some treatments before I go into the dry needling and I don't like my patients um, flip-flopping you know, around. However, that being said, maybe you um, have the patient in side lying and you're, you just finished up doing a muscle energy technique on the piriformis to help, um, help you know, pull a sacral dysfunction forward, and then you want to dry needle the piriformis after that, you can have it in sideline and go right into that without the patient having to move a bunch too. So just thinking outside your bigger picture of what position you need them to be in and why um, would be the only thing I would have to say with that. Do you yeah. like doing it in sideline or? No, no, I do it better? in prone. No, no, prone position is much better. Prone position. Yeah, I think I just get my bearing... Overall, period, everything, I get my bearing better and my orientation better and for prone. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, okay, so here is again, so I'm going in bracketing, I'm pressing, compressing down to make sure I'm getting through that top layer of adipose tissue. Um, then I'm gonna be needling again. 